Hey, hey, and welcome to this, another episode of Work Smarter, Not Harder, with me, Tony Harmer. And in this movie, we're going to look at adding a key line stroke or an outer border to a graphic element here. So I've got this camper van, which I used a similar version of this for the previous movie on dynamic symbols. And I'll just show you that it's actually made of two groups here. Here's one set, that's the fill as a group, and of course, all of the strokes as another group. So I'm just going to put those back together and then select both groups and group them because the key to doing this is actually having a group. I'm then going to open the appearance panel here and you can see that I've still got the group selected. Of course, this needs to remain selected throughout. So I've got the group and it shows me contents. Just so you know, what this means to Illustrator is it means draw the contents first and then surround them as a group, basically. That's what it's telling uh, the artboard to do. I'm going to add a new fill based on this group. So I'm just going to use command slash, that's control slash if you're on Windows, and that adds a new fill to the group. OK, and there's a button for that just here to add a new fill. But command slash, of course, is much quicker. I'm then going to offset the path that this has drawn. So I'm going to go to the effect menu here, down to path and choose offset path. I'll turn on the preview so you can see what's happening. And I'll make this a bit bigger to start off with. Now, there are a few hybrid points in here and they're creating these interesting sharp angles, which I don't want. So I'm going to round those by changing the join method there. And if I choose round, you can see they all get nicely rounded off. And this is typically the sort of thing and appearance you want to do when you're drawing maybe icons, for example. It's quite often the case that you need to do that because you want to clearly separate them from their background. So I'm going to dial this down a little bit. I'm just clicking in that box there and just using the arrow keys to bring this down to about two millimeters on mine and then hit OK. Then in the appearance panel, I'm simply going to drag that fill down beneath the contents, right? So think of it a little bit like layers, okay? So again, this is saying to the artboard, draw this fill and because the disclosure triangle here is open, you can see it's got the offset path effect in that. And it says then draw the contents and that whole thing is a group like so. And why this method is so much more flexible than the methods that you'll quite often see uh, put out there, uh, certainly on YouTube and other places where they say, I'll oh, create the object then duplicate it and then use the pathfinder to turn that into one single object and then offset that and then put it behind the first one is that that's not very flexible and in all of my movies i try and give you the most flexible approach so that when you need to make changes you can make them quickly okay so here for example if i wanted to change that fill color well that's really simple you can just go ahead and just change the color there really simply that's that's dead dead simple if i needed to change the amount of offset then i can click there and change the amount of offset if i turn on the preview and make it bigger and then smaller then that's just fine also but you could be arguing well you could do that with a separate shape but here's the thing what if the shape changes okay because then you're going to be in a situation where you'll need to go back to the bit where you've then got the new shape and then you have to make a new one and all of those things whereas here I'm just going to double click now on the camper van to go into isolation mode on the group. Just zoom out a fraction because on the clipboard, I've actually got a surfboard. I'm going to paste that down just now. Watch what happens when I move that outside of the boundary of this group. You can see that it's automatically inheriting that stroke, which applies to this entire group. So I can bring that along to the top here. OK, and move that around, just nudging that with the arrow keys. And you can see that the stroke or as you're seeing as a stroke, the fill is being modified for me automatically. Whereas if I'd done this, for example, and then 
somebody said to me, oh, that surfboard needs to move back a little way from there. I'd be going back to the beginning, right? If I was using the Pathfinder way of doing things and having to rebuild that each and every time. Whereas here, it doesn't matter what you do. If I just go into that again and select that, if I move it around to the front or the back or even spin it around here so it's hanging off the back, okay, then it doesn't matter where it goes and what I add to it, it will automatically inherit those things. So there you go. That's how we can add a key line border or outline to our graphic elements. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Reach out to me via Twitter. Follow my Facebook page. All of those details will be along in just a second. And keep on watching. So for now, we're done. And until next time, see ya.